Great. Good morning, it's Aura from CBON Magazine, and this time I'm going to have the pleasure of interviewing Penny Pierce, who is a popular author, a lecturer, a counselor, and a trainer specialized in intuition, personal energy, frequency, and dream work. Good morning, Penny. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and for enlightening the See Beyond Magazine audience and readers and listeners. Oh, that's my pleasure. <laughs> Penny, you've been uh, featured in very many different magazines such as Cosmopolitan and Good Housekeeping <laughs> and <laughs> New Age and Intuition. But most importantly, you have many books that you wrote, out of which uh, four of them were published by Simon & Schuster. Mm -hmm. It's such a huge name. And just to mention you know, a few, it was the intuitive way, uh, frequency that was the one that really you know, came very, very close to my heart, and then leap of perception. And the one that you are going to come out with on October 2017, this October, mm -hmm. it's called Transparency, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and the, the subtitle of that one is Seeing Through to Our Expanded Human Capacity. Wow. And yeah. we need to be transparent. Unfortunately, we are all clogged up, you know, by social media and tons of problems that we don't really see a solution for you we don't really see through or see beyond them right 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 so penny i mean you have so much experience when it's coming down to creative writing mm. and very many times people are asking how do i start writing what's the process of writing so can you give us some tips of how your schooling and your education um, helped you become the prolific writer you are today? <laughs> I think, you know, I actually, I started very young when someone gave me a diary, you know, like maybe six or seven years old. <laughs> and then you got everybody's autographs, you know, all your friends. And then you wrote things and everybody had diaries and we, you know, wrote in each other's things, um, which got me kind of started keeping a journal. Okay. That has been a long-term process for me, um, and it's evolved over the years. But also, I really enjoyed um, creative writing classes in school, mm -hmm. and you know, short stories and essays and whatever it was. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it, maybe you just have a natural tendency toward wanting to organize thoughts and put them together. Right. But, um, but I liked that, and so I think. And then I started writing poetry when I was pretty young as well. Stupid poetry, <laughs> you know, that was, but I was fun for me, you know, and then that evolved as well. Um, so, I, you know, it just, maybe it was in my blood or karma or something, mm -hmm. but um, the way it ha happens for me often is that I, maybe it's something about a need to share things that you're thinking. And maybe that's the natural teacher's instinct, you know, is to, oh, I found this great idea. I want to share it with everybody, you know, and, or I saw this movie, so I wish you would look at it. You know, you would like it too. Um, so, um, but yeah, there, I often things grab me, certain thoughts. I hear somebody say a sentence and I go, oh, that relates to this, this, and this. And then my mind starts to, you know, connect things up and, um, um, and then it just it becomes almost like this bubble inside that rises up out of my body and goes up here and then it wants to pop and go out, you know, onto something. Um, and so, and sometimes, like, especially with a poem, sometimes mm -hmm. I hear the first line and then I have to write it down. And as soon as I write it down, the next line comes. And then the whole thing. And then it, it goes. And I don't know where it's going to end. And then it ends in this beautiful way. It's like something else is almost writing it. And that's like a, I mean, it's a form of creativity that is, any form of creativity is magic. You know, where you start it, you do your part. And then the imaginal realm does its part. Then you do your part. Then the imaginal realm does its part. And you, you're like, you know, co-creating with the invisible world. And, you know, to me, that's like, it's just so much fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
So the first step is then to just show up, right? And the <laughs> yeah. universe is going to match you. Because if you are absent, you know, from the field of creation, nothing can come into being, correct? Right, right. And I think part of that, I talk about it in my books, having this part of our mind, I call it the inner perceiver. And it's that part of our mind that helps you notice what you notice. So, you know, and, and we all talk about mindfulness these days and paying attention and all that. But with, if you work with your inner perceiver, you start to become conscious of noticing what you're noticing. It's like, well, why did I see that? Or why did I think about that? You know, why did that strange image happen in my reality? And then you go in and you answer yourself. And you have a dialogue with that part of your mind so that you get, you get through to yourself. You're saying, well, oh, why? Oh, I guess I'm thinking about this theme under the surface right. of my mind. You know, that's where my fantasy was going. So why am I thinking about that right now? Um, and, and it makes the deeper part of you conscious. Hmm. So showing up, to me, is about working with that inner perceiver. Right. To really be present in the moment with what you're noticing. Right. And that, that's where I feel the bubble coming up. And I go, oh, wait, there's something here that wants to be said. <laughs> you know, and I can feel the actual physical sensation of something rising that wants to formulate out of the right brain into the left brain and into language for me. Now, other people might, it might be music that comes right. out that way, or it might be a piece of artwork or something or sculpture. Um, but for me, it's words. You know, and words to me also are about music. They are, if you write poetry and you listen for the sounds inside words and the beauty of how words combine, then it is like a kind of music. In fact, they used to call poets singers in the old, <laughs> you know. Um, it's not so much the words, it's the tone of. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and just the, the beauty of of the sounds combining and right. then the meaning within the sounds combining. And that's something that entertains me hmm. when I really pay attention to it. Right. You know, and I always try to write even my nonfiction books with a kind of poetic feeling where every sentence is a kind of jewel. If I can make it beautiful and create a paragraph that feels beautiful, you know, I put a lot of attention into that. Um, do, do you think that everybody has this inner poet that somehow is going to be ready to explode like a volcano, and <laughs> ready to share his story? Probably somewhere deep down, you know, and if it's not poetry, like I said, it could be the inner musician or the inner, mm -hmm. you know, painter or whatever, a cook, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, but I think, yes, we all have that urge to create to make something out of nothing or to play off of other things that come in because creativity is also, and writing is also about playfulness. Of course. Right? You know, of course. Like I said, if somebody said a certain thing on the TV this morning, got my mind going and then I had to write something about it. Wow. You know? I love um, it. Can you make connections? I like that. Yeah, making connections. And of course that's intuitive. Of Intuition course. functions when you make connections and are, see similarities. Right things if you see things that are separate and different there's no intuition involved right I, and so when you want to be creative you have to enter the flow, the flow right the flow is based on connections and trust that stuff will come you know that you start a process and the process will help you right. you help it it helps you and then you get that co-creative thing going you said a word that just triggered my mind. You said trust. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that very many of us don't trust our own abilities to create or to listen to our own inner voice, knowing, knowing literally that we also have a voice like everybody else. And that can be expressed if we are going to shut off the monkey brain that it's just cluttering our, our soul and mind. So how do you shut off all those other voices that are coming from social media, from parents, <laughs> from coworkers, from friends, that you can literally be with yourself and express in words who you truly are, not what others have told you who you should yeah, be? That's a, 
really, really important question. I think, um, you know, it's the left brain that works with language. It's the left brain that categorizes and makes meaning and definitions and locks things down into belief systems and all of that. And it basically separates you from the flow it, or from the soul or from the field around you that you're part of. Right. The right brain is the direct immersion into the field. It has no language. It's direct experiential, like an animal, you know. Right. And you go into there and you have this sense of belonging and you know everything kind of all at once. So in order to get to the right brain, which is where all the imagination and creativity arises from, you have to be quiet. In other words, shut off the talking of the left brain. <laughs> right? <laughs> And of course, if you're answering your cell phone every minute, every time it vibrates or whatever, you know, you're, you're in this frantic sort of constant, you know, searching for the message, the language that, you know, put these things away and be quiet, be still. Well, people, we don't know how to do that today. It feels like, like painful, you know, to just be quiet, but we have to cultivate that habit. Hmm. When you get quiet, then. You can drop, I call it stop and drop, you know, come down, <laughs> down in your body um, and be aware of, you know, simple things like your heart beating and breathing and how you're aware of the air around you and how you can start connecting with the things that you're aware of inside your bubble. Right. Right. And just be with, there's a kind of a feminine consciousness that's non-action oriented. That's like be with things, appreciate things, don't try to change anything. There's nothing required. You can just enjoy. You know, go into that state like a an old, old lady sitting out on her front porch in her rocking chair, you know, just like enjoying the life passing by. And um and just feel. So. You go into a direct experiential sensory feeling of things. Hmm. And then you drop in further and then you drop in further. And maybe at that point you start asking yourself, what's important to me or what am I really interested in? Hmm. What things grab my attention and make me feel something really important? You know, and it might be that there is a social issue out there or something in the news or, you know, something that affects other people that, that hurts you or that you feel like you want to help with. Right. Or maybe there's some kind of idea that's just, really interesting to you you know um and those things will bubble up those the bubbles you know <laughs> that i say um, and you'll start to oh wait a minute what about that idea oh yes well what do i think about that idea hmm. well what could be done about that idea you know you have to ask yourself some leading questions right it's like mining you have to shovel in there and dig out some things and i think you do that through dialogue Right. With yourself. With yourself, correct. Mm -hmm. correct. So if I were to tell, you know, writers, what would be the first step into the creative process? It would be just shut off your left brain and be at peace with your right brain so you can feel the flow coming through you mm -hmm. and then start writing. So that's the first well, step. Well, no, and then find out what's really important and interesting to you correct. so that you get motivated and curious. Correct. And then you let things start to connect the ideas like, oh, I have this a thought. Well, what, it, what would it be like if we did this with it? Or what would it be like if we did that? Now you're going into your imagination oh, to start sort of um, creating this art, this sculpture, this thing out of ideas. Right. You know? right. And, and those ideas often are, have emotion to them. Hmm. They have passion. So you yeah. are unveiling pretty much, you know, the different yeah. layers of a piece of art. That's it. You're, you're allowing layers to become visible. And then, you know, it's like Michelangelo started with a yeah. block of stone and he saw the sculpture inside of it already, just removed the parts that weren't, you know, the, the art. Um, and so you have to get at what the real thing is. Right. And it's already there. It's, it already pre-exists pre-exist I love you're that. sort of just getting at it. it it will come to you as much as you go toward it correct correct you know 
when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what would be the second step? Now I have the ideas. I kind mm -hmm. of like know what's in the field that I would love to explore. So what's next? With writing, I think it is, you do have to understand grammar and the specifics of spelling, grammar, mm -hmm. rhythms of sentences, um, certain kinds of structure, you know, do you want a lot of run on sentences or a lot of short punchy sentences or do you want semicolons and two pieces connecting and right. or do you want to vary that rhythm within a paragraph right. so that you have a sense of the, um, you know, the detail part of the, the procedure. Mm -hmm. So that you, you've got your basics together, then you can manipulate that to create an effect. Right. You know, a fluid effect or an upsetting effect. Maybe you, you know, don't want any punctuation. Maybe you want to use weird punctuation. Maybe you, you know, want all short sentences that irritate people. You know, do you do what you can with the structure you have right. to create an effect? And you'll know what that effect is because it'll come to you as you're writing. Right. You know, if you want it to be beautiful and inspiring and uplifting, or if you want it to agitate people and make them think, you know, you know, it's just depending sure. what you feel like in that moment. But you need to have a sense of the basics and don't overlook that because you know you know how to edit things too. If you read sure. something that doesn't work, how would you fix that so that it would work? And right. that's a good exercise to take is work on other people's stuff. Right. Read other people's good writing or read other people's bad writing. That's, that's exactly, that was my next question. So the more reading you're going to do, the better you're going to become at your own writing. <laughs> yeah. And read with a critical ear. Of because, course. you know, is it music? Uh, what kind of music is it? Do you know, right. is it rap? Is it, you know, whatever, is it classical? Um, and um, I think there's a certain, you can feel the difference in writing that is very pedestrian and ordinary, mm. where there's very little imagination and writing that kind of lifts you and inspires you or makes you just oh my god that is such a great sentence you know like yes. how did they think of that yes and why did they use that word right there you know oh like that just made all the difference in the world of course you know? and then, yeah and you're like oh beautiful writing you know it, it's like a it's such a masterful thing you know and you and so if you read pedestrian ordinary writing you might take that and see well, how could that be better Right. If I were going to rewrite this thought, how would I rewrite it? I love it. I you know, love practice it. with um, practice with little things like that that aren't that important. Then start on crafting your own paragraphs. Right. You know. Do you have a rigorous schedule when it's coming down to writing? When I have a book contract mm -hmm. and they give you, you know, it's in your contract when it's supposed to be done, right? you know, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so you kind of have a sense that I, I have, a, I can do X number of chapters in a month mm -hmm. and you have to figure that out. Then it, that's your job at that point right. that you go to work every day and you work on it for X number of hours a day to get that amount done. And so I think you have to be disciplined in that okay. regard because you can't just be i don't feel like it today you know um it's <laughs> you know and then so what i i just start in the morning and i often reread what i did the day before fix it i often edit right. as i go along right um, and then i write for an x number of hours and i sometimes i go back through again and again and again and again as i write that day and then i go it again in the morning um so I clean things up a lot mm. as I go along and the ideas I write about are pretty complex. Um, I'm translating very big metaphysical, large scale, right. abstract conceptual ideas down into palatable language where people can actually have a direct experience of some of these things and not use language that's too out there. Um, 
you know, so I get, I can get confused. I'm writing and, you know, did I say that before? You know, and <laughs> there's a lot of straightening out that happens as I go along. But yes, I, I will write every day, even weekends. You know, now on other kind of writing, it's more haphazard sometimes, you know, um, like a poem or something. Well, like I said, just grab me or an essay or something I want to write for the website. I get a thought and I think I could write a piece on that. Right. And, and I'll, I'll just sit down and, and do that. Right. You know, I've, people have asked me to write forwards for their books. Mm -hmm. and, um, I always feel like I want to help other writers. So I, I usually write blurbs. I usually will write a forward. Um, it doesn't take that long, you know, and other people are saying, oh, I'm so busy. I can't do it. But, um, you know, I always try to. Um, but once I have an assignment, you know, then I want to finish it on time. I want to, you know, be responsible. Hmm. Yeah. So you, you sit down, you write, and then, you know, the first round, you are your first editor because you feel how this language, how this writing is supposed to look like before it's going to go to your editor. Right. And, and Actually, I think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, and I think that that's the power of good writing. You mm -hmm. know what needs to be checked. You know what needs to be changed even before going to another pair of eyes. Yeah. Well, when I first wrote my first book, The Intuitive Way, mm -hmm. um, I outlined it and I showed it to different people and they said, oh my God, you have way too much material here. This, you have three books worth of material. So go break it down. And I was like, break it down? <laughs> no. Uh, so, I mean, that I went through, I don't know how many revisions and, asking people and getting trying to find an agent and she said break it down you know like everybody was like <laughs> and I was like I have so much in my head I want to get it on in the paper and um and people can't assimilate that much right so right. I had to be compassionate about how much I wanted to say but also then I um once we we got the contract um mm -hmm. I really didn't know how to write nonfiction work. I, I studied other people's. Um, but then, so I hired um, a friend of mine who's an editor and she, I mean, it was expensive. But she edited, helped me edit the whole book. It was like taking a very expensive seminar. And, but she was very compassionate. Mm -hmm. And as I watched how she edited things and removed or moved things around, I went, oh, wow, that works better. And then you could see the logic in it. You could see how beautiful it was when she did it. And pretty soon I, I could really see that a good, compassionate editor is so valuable because a lot of editors are egotistical and they want to put their mark on your work. So if you find somebody who's kind and gentle, but also smart, <laughs> wow, what a gift. So it was through her that I really learned the structure. And what was too much and what was what needed to be have an example, let's say, right. you know, make a statement, but then ground it with an example or um, don't have too much of one thing running all at once and different principles, you know. Um, and then after the the other editors got hold of it and edited some more, <laughs> then, you know, and you like I'm on the fourth round now of my current transparency book. Wow. Editing again all the little typos or anything left you know um but yeah so you i learned by having the help of other people hmm. um, what actually works yes and, uh, yeah and 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 now i mean it comes down to there is a, a sense of when you're actually producing a book that you want you're working with people who know grammar who know punctuation mm -hmm. and also they have a template that your material has to fit into to fit the right. number of pages that they need to have to print the book for the amount of money that they're going to sell it for. Right. So there is a so, certain structure, right? That's right. And you can't just be up in your head. Oh, it's going to be, you know, 600 pages. No, no. Um, <laughs> so, so partly what I'm doing now is that when they flow the material into the, the template, 
-hmm. often the page lengths come out different. Like some are too short, some are too long. So right. I get this message, can you add three lines here? Can you take out two lines over here? And, you know, so those are just functional edits that have to be made so the book will look okay. Of course. You know? Do you have an audience in mind when you're doing this writing? Um, over the years, I think my audience has, it started off just sort of, um, you know, the new age people in the early years and then the um, self, self development, human potential people, and then psychology people. And now it's business people too. You know, it's all kinds of um, people who are looking for new perception, new angles on how to do things, how life is changing, what transformation is. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a lot of people who are thinking about these things now. So it's kind of expanded. Right. From writing, you know, to a targeted audience to a way larger one, right? Right, right, right. Absolutely. I love that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's, let's go and talk a little bit about, you know, your, your book, your ideas are in place, are contained. You kind of like know what kind of a product you have. So not, what's the next stage? You know, how are you looking for an agent? You know, now that you have your product in your hand or in your mm -hmm. mind. <laughs> I, I looked for an agent for quite a while as I was looking for a publisher early on with the first book. Mm -hmm. and. Um, found one through friends. So she worked with me for a couple of books and then she decided that she wanted to go back to being an editor herself. Hmm. And it left me without an agent. But at that point I had already published two books with the same publisher and they knew me. So I really didn't need an agent anymore. I was pretty happy with, with the you know, publisher. So what I did was hire a, a literary attorney. Wow. Okay. And he um, negotiated the contracts for me. Okay. And knew, you know, what kind of things to put in there and what kind of tricks they were trying to pull over your eyes, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, so I have kept him all these years. Hmm. I, and that's good because I don't have to pay an agent 20% or 15%. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. And you know that from a legal point of view, you're actually covered as well. So, yeah. it, correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. And now, you know, of course, you know, you found the publisher, he found the publisher. Mm -hmm. And so what's next? You know, the product is there, you know, the book is going to come out. So what's the next step that people should be ready for? Writers should be ready for, because they think, many of them think, I wrote the book, I got the publisher, and now I'm just going to sit and relax. Is it like that? Right. Um, well, of course, you might self-publish as well, and that's a whole other thing, or do an e-book, and that's a whole other process that you can do. Right. But um, once, once the, the book is complete and it's in production, then the, the promotional staff starts to come at you. Right. You know, and like, okay, how are we going to promote this thing? Um, and it's different today, unless you're a huge, huge author that they can make money on book tours with, Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to pay for book tours anymore right so it's just not worth it it's too much ex expense for the amount of people who buy the books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh so what's often done now are radio and podcast tours right you know so lots and lots and lots of interviews and getting out to as many people as you can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um then the salespeople will come to you now too. They want, they want, um, what are the, um, mine actually asked me last week for keywords because I have unusual words in my book that could mean something like a list of keywords, almost like you would put on a website. And then they wanted pithy stories that their sales <laughs> uh, or things about your book that because their sales team has 200 books that they're trying to pitch to different right. distributors and stuff. So they have to know something about it and make it interesting. Mm -hmm. So it, I never had to do that before. Now I have to do that too. Now I'm like training the sales team about what my book is <laughs> and, um, and doing, a, you know, they write the copy often in New York for a book that they've never seen, <laughs> or they, 
awful sometimes. It's just awful. And um, like, oh, here are three points about this book. Let's put them all in one sentence. And, you know, and just, you know, not really getting the energy of what the book is. So I've been, this time around especially, been rewriting all the promotional copy for the press releases, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the, the description of your book that goes out to the public. Um, the the back cover, the flaps right. of what the book's going to have. I solicited all the endorsements. I solicited somebody to write the foreword for me. That takes a lot of time. Of course. And I got very little help from the publisher on that. You know, um, so it, people need to know these things because it, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's 90%. It it's you who's going to create a product. And then when the product is done, it's not that you're just going to, you know, plop it into the publisher's lap and you're going to move on. I mean, you have to do a lot of work after that. The writing is just mm -hmm. 10%. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody said to me the other day that, that they thought their publisher was really just a glorified printer today. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, but, um, but you know, they, they do all the foreign rights sales and they do do a lot, you know, and, but they do make a lot too. The author gets very little in these contracts. I know. Much better if you self publish or eBooks, you get a lot bigger percentage, oh. but you don't have the sales force. Right. You know, the right. And the distribution as well. Right. Yeah. And the yeah. distribution, yeah. So, you know, there are trade-offs, and Absolutely. but they want you to have a platform, right? That's the Which word. Means, That's the word. And that often is, you know, Facebook, social media, your mailing list, newsletter, your blogs, and all that stuff. That that that's a lot of work that you don't get paid for either. You know, keeping oh. all that up, and it's all promotional work. I'm so, sure. um, hmm. you know. It, it and it's also a lot of writing as well. Of you course, know? of course, of course. Generating related content. content related mm -hmm. to your book, of course. Yeah. Right, and then courses, you know, and yes. and going out and teaching and talking and lecturing at conferences or whatever it's going to be, to help people find you and know about you. You know, they have to know you're out there. Of course, of course, your yeah. presence, your you know, public presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is if you're going to try and make a, a large part of your living from writing. I, I think writing is, I remember when I did my first book, people said, this is just a glorified business card <laughs> that you hand to people and say, here's what I am, you know, and they get a feel for you. But I also remember when my first book went out, it was much more popular than I thought it would be. And it went into like 30 something languages, the intuitive wow, way. Congratulations. And, and then people started calling and it was, I said, it's going out there and making friends for me in the world that I would not have been able to find, you know, <laughs> by myself. And so it was like an extension. That's what you know. I think is all about. That's what yeah. I think it's inspiring people. It's inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's almost like creating a, a large family of out in the world. You know, I, I like to think of it that way. Like-minded souls, pretty much, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are going to vibrate, you know, with you. Yes. So we will definitely have you once again, you know, right before your book is going to be out, Transparency, right. that it's right. going to come out in October, and then we are going to talk about that particular book and some inside stories Oh, no worries for Sorry. what the book is all about. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. We're all transparent here and phone yes. calls, you know, are yes. there for all of us, right? It's the real world that kicks <laughs> in. Technology things you have to remember to do, you know, like <laughs> get everything to work. Um, yeah, well, this was really fun talking about the writing. I, I hadn't really thought very deeply about it. Recently. Thank you so much. I mean, for all the inside tips, because I think there are very many people out there who would like to write and they don't really know the stages. And thank you yeah. for clarifying that for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for asking the questions. Thank you so much, Penny. And looking forward to seeing you. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, my dear one. Bye. Right. Have a great Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.